They say that the title of a YouTube video should explain to you, the viewer, exactly what said video you clicked on is all about. That it should work with the video thumbnail to instill curiosity, enticing you to click, because if you don't click, you won't watch. It's an agreement of sorts. The title and thumbnail have offered you something. And now that you're watching, this video must deliver on the promise of what's been offered, or you'll stop watching. These first 60 seconds are crucial, and I'm not sure if explaining how YouTube titles and thumbnails work will work, but hey, whatever, I'm giving it a shot. The seconds along with the title and thumbnail have to always hold your curiosity just enough to make you want to continue to watch. Am I doing this? I have no idea. At the time of writing and recording this, I don't even know what the title and thumbnail are. I haven't figured it out yet. How do I describe a trip like this with one picture and 65 characters? We better start from the beginning. So, here we are in the beautiful little city of Spokane, Washington. And I am in the historic Davenport Hotel today. For the next six days, I am doing a bike tour from here in Spokane to Coeur d'Alene, through the trail of the Coeur d'Alene's, down through Harrison and Wallace, and up through the Hiawatha Trail, and back here to this very hotel. I was asked to join a six day rail to trail e-bike tour through Washington, Idaho, and Montana. The trip starts in Spokane, Washington, and from there makes its way east through Coeur d'Alene, Harrison, Kellogg, Wallace, eventually finishing with the crown jewel of the rail to trail system the Hiawatha. That's the big deal about this trip, the rail to trail part. Rails to trails are retired railroad lines converted to multi-use trails. These trails are either paved or have a surface of gravel, dirt, or mulch with wide width and gentle grades. There are over 400 miles of rail trail in Idaho, but the miles that people come from all over the world to ride are way up north. The 73 mile trail of the Coeur d'Alene's and the route of the Hiawatha. Now, before I put these videos together, I do have something in my mind, a way I wanna shoot these, a way I wanna edit them. And I just spent a week shooting downhill mountain biking. And I was like, that's how I'm gonna do this trip. I'm gonna go super slow-mo. I'm gonna have pretty girls smiling, cute <laughs> couples, cute kids, you know, big thumbs up. And <laughs> I went to the orientation last night and met my group of models and um, I believe the average age is 76. Oh come on John, stop exaggerating. Look, there's Austin, he's your age. Austin was on the trip with his dad Bob, which is super cool. But it can't be helped, this is a video that you can see with your eyes. And my group was a fun bunch from an older generation, enjoying their golden years. Now how is it that this group is going to ride bikes all the way across Idaho? So we're starting the day at Riverside State Park here in Spokane, which I believe is the largest state park in Washington. And I think we're gonna start with this Spokane River Centennial Trail, which cuts right through Spokane on our way to Coeur d'Alene. A good 39 miles we're gonna do today, so everyone is getting their bikes. I've never ridden cruiser e-bikes before. It's really nice. It's, it's some luxury bike riding. <laughs> A lot different than the, uh, the normal bike riding we do. Pedago e-bikes. With these bad boys, you can go as fast as you want with as little or as much pedaling as you prefer. I ended up preferring barely pedaling at all. E-bike innovation has come a long way and now trips like these are possible for the whole family. Maybe your kids are still young or your parents are a little older. That's how Austin and Bob can ride across a whole state together, even at Bob's ripe young age of 80 years old. Age is just a number, people. And for these tours, Pedigo partnered with local Idaho travel company, Row Adventures, to facilitate the trip. So Pedigo provided the bikes, and Row arranged the hotels, meals, and provided the guides. Like Connor and Connor here. They also drive the van and trailer. Now, plenty of people spend a week up here road tripping from trail to trail or doing something like the Hiawatha as a day trip. 
But if you don't want to ride on highways, you'll need to do some driving, and having a shuttle driver is even better. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to look at booking this trip. It includes your bike, food and lodging, shuttle and guides. If you're more of a do-it-yourself type, I get ya. And hopefully by the end of this, you have most of the info you need to plan your own adventure. All right, I think that's all the backstory we need. And now we're way behind. That's why, while I was blabbering, I showed you day one, a nice ride around Spokane. Now, let's go to day two, which starts in the famous North Idaho tourist town of Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> Blackfall Island boat ramp. We're about to get on the beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene, the reason everyone comes here, for a little kayak tour with Ro. We had a nice bike ride around the lake this morning, good 16 miles, but Ro gave us the day to just explore Coeur d'Alene because, I mean, it's such a cool town. You gotta spend a day in Coeur d'Alene. And I have chosen to hop on one of their kayak tours to be able to see it from the lake. So here we are, morning, day three. We are in the town of Harrison, which I'm super excited about because if you followed me for a while, you'll remember that back in February, I was here with Chad and Brett doing this exact same stretch, the trail of the Coeur d'Alene's on an e-bike. We were supposed to be on fat bikes riding on snow, but there wasn't enough snow. So we ended up doing e-bikes on this beautiful stretch. I loved it. So if I loved it last time when it was cold and pouring rain, I think that this time when we have beautiful weather, a actual bluebird day, no smoke, uh, 80 degree highs, I think it's going to be a really good day. having a sip of coffee here. This coffee shop in Harrison called The Bike House. And weirdly enough, I just noticed they rent e-bikes. So if you don't go on your Pedagogo tour and you wanna just spend a day or do a day trip in Harrison and you actually wanna do a day trip with e-bikes, you can just come to this bicycle coffee shop house in the middle of Harrison and rent your e-bike. bumped into one moose on this ride, a female moose and her calves. And a few miles down the way, there is another moose out in this wetland. This one is male. And he's just out here feeding on the, uh, the reeds and grass.
This is uh, Silver Mountain, Silver Mountain Resort. I have been here a couple of times now and I always love Silver Mountain. It's a super cool place. There is North America's longest gondola up to the top of the mountain. Uh, we're staying in the condos right in the lodge. There's restaurants downstairs, there's bike shops, there's coffee all around, there's Idaho's largest indoor water park is here. made it to Wallace and there's a moose, a mother moose and her baby behind me. On day four we make it to the gateway of the Hiawatha, Wallace, Idaho. Oh man, how do I explain Wallace? Better pick some different music. You know when you're at the bar and you have one too many and come up with an absolutely outrageous nonsensical idea with your friends? Usually you forget about it the next morning or think to yourself, wow, that was a crazy idea. Well, somehow the citizens of Wallace turned their drunk thought into their city's biggest tourist attraction. So behind me is the famous Wallace manhole call cover the uh, self-proclaimed center of the universe. So the story goes is that a bunch of friends were drinking in this bar right here and basically we're like, based on the law of probability or possibility, if we claim that the Wallace is the center of the universe, then it must be true. Basically, if you claim it's the center of the universe, then you can't prove that it isn't. That's Wallace for you. What a crazy town. Movies are shot here. There's about one bar for every 100 people and the old brothel is still standing. So now it's just a museum. In the 70s, the Federal Highway Administration tried to build I-90 through Wallace. So some clever citizens band together and had the town placed on the National Register of Historic Places. That's why you see I-90 going over it and the buildings downtown haven't changed much. There's also a deep mining history in Wallace. See what I did there? Wallace is the heart of the Silver Valley recognized as the richest silver mining district on earth, having produced 1.2 billion ounces since 1884. To this day, Wallace is the largest silver producer in the world. In the afternoon, our group hopped on the Sierra Silver Mine Trolley downtown for the Sierra Silver Mine Tour. This is Idaho's second most popular tour. I've done it twice now and I'll probably do it again. It's a real mine with real equipment and best of all, a real miner leads the tour. So every time you go, you get a different miner telling different stories with different degrees of hearing loss. Wallace Idaho, I've never been anywhere like it. All right, we're 15 minutes and four days into this thing. Have we found our title yet? Maybe not the title, but I knew what thumbnail I'd be using before I ever made it to North Idaho. In the land of silver, there can only be one crown jewel. We finally made it to the Hiawatha. at the east portal for the famous Hiawatha Trail. If you've never heard about the Hiawatha Trail, I don't know how you came across this video, but the Hiawatha Trail at the time of its construction was the most expensive rail line in the United States. It was funded by the Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller for $75,000 a mile, which in those days was astronomically expensive. And you'll see why it was so expensive. It's because of all the trestles and tunnels and things like that that needed to go in to get this train through these mountains. So you start the ride off with a one and a half mile tunnel called the St. Paul's Tunnel. It is the largest tunnel I believe in the rail to trail system. And it's always 47 degrees in that tunnel and dark.
They say that the end of a YouTube video should be quick, abrupt almost, to not give the audience any indication that the video is coming to a close because once I do, you'll start looking for the next one. I add more, more footage, more info, leave it for the end screen. We're always on to the next thing, the next video, the next adventure. Hiawatha, rail to trails, a bike trip across the Idaho panhandle. Simple, basic. Did it pique your interest? Hold your curiosity? It's been a blast, North Idaho. And now, on to the next one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.